get started in the industry. Um, and my first response is build yourself a lab. You've got to have hands-on because you can't get it from books. Um, also, I found that some of my colleagues have been um, doing um, like CNA or ANA for years, and they're losing their technical edge. They don't have their own labs. Their employees don't, or employers don't provide them with any kind of technical area where they can test and learn, and they're just they're losing it. They're just nothing but uh, you know interview, upload the artifact, go on to the next thing. It's, it's, it's sad. So anyway, the next slide is my attempt at uh, animation. Let's see if it works. Who am I? I started in the computer industry in 1982, believe it or not. I've been specializing in IT security for the past 15 years. I'm an ass. There's my ass hat. <laughs> And I uh, showed early signs of geekiness as a child. I preferred robots to dolls. And got, gauging by the zeal with which AARP is pursuing me, I seem to have become a geek elder. Now, in the beginning, curiosity and the introduction of more affordable microcomputers created the current, created a phenomenon. The, uh, Geeks in Basement launched the computer industry as we know it today. You think of Jobs and Bill Gates. Okay, some of them were in garages, but you get the point. Okay, the result, basements nurture tech skills, and geeks are happy. But now we've come to the problem. Eventually, you have to leave your basement, if you're lucky enough to have one, to make a living. Industry focus has shifted from practical research to mandated compliance and automated tools. There's very real, there's very little real hands-on work available. The result, practical skills are difficult to acquire and geeks are sad, but there's a solution. We're gonna build our own portable basement on a laptop. It can go where you go and you can build and sharpen your skills anywhere. So the first thing we're going to talk about is hardware. You're going to need a beefy laptop. It's going to need at least 8 gigs of RAM. I started with 8. I'm now up to 16. And um, it's working quite well. Powerful processor quad core is recommended. You need a, at least a 1 terabyte hard drive because we're going to be using virtual machines and they get to be quite big. Amazingly, laptops with these specs can be obtained through Amazon for less than $500. So it's not gonna cost an arm and a leg. And if your budget allows, gaming laptops are ideal and their upgraded graphical processor units speed up password cracking. And there you go, my dream machine. Okay, next thing we're gonna talk about is the platform. We were talking about virtual machines. Oh, sorry. Virtual machine blocking my own thing. So we're talking about virtual machines, um, and I like VirtualBox. It's free. It's uh, from Oracle. It's updated regularly. Works very, very well. Very stable. And um, it does things that um, other free platforms like VMware Player don't do. Some of the things you can do with um, virtual machine, I'm sorry, with vir VirtualBox uh, is create um, snapshots which you cannot do with with VMware player snapshots let you take a, a, a an image of your virtual machine when you have it the way you want it and then if you make any modifications and and you you screw it up you can roll back to the snapshot and you've got your pristine machine back again that's very important the other thing that um, VirtualBox does is it has uh, guest editions, which offers excellent support for uh, hardware, um, which I don't. I find that uh, VMware Player doesn't. The support is not as good. Not as many devices supported. So, for ease of use and functionality, I re recommend VirtualBox. Okay, VirtualBox runs on. Uh, Intel or AMD computers running Windows, Mac, Linux, or Solaris operating systems. Cross-platform, really great. For example, you can run Windows and Linux on your Mac, 
run Windows Server 2008 on your Linux server, and run Linux on your Windows PC, and on and on. You can install and run as many virtual machines as you like. The only practical limits are disk space and memory. So the more memory you have, the better, the, the, larger, the larger your disk, the better. Here's an example of VirtualBox running, on, running Ubuntu 14 on a Windows 7 machine. So you'd see it doesn't have to be the same type of operating system. You can run anything on anything, as long as they support um, uh, VirtualBox. And here's two virtual machines running simultaneously. We have a Windows 7 workstation and a Kali Linux server, both running simultaneously. Okay, you can get a lot of free Linux VMs that are pre-built through a site called virtualboxes.org. It provides virtual machines for numerous free or open source operating systems for education, testing, security, and entertainment purposes. And if you don't find what you want on VirtualBox, <clears throat> virtualboxes.org, you can go to the VM um, website and download the ISO and VirtualBox can be used to create a VM from the ISO. So if there's another version of, of uh, Linux that you want and it's not present on this site, not a problem. Here is what VirtualBox is currently offering. You'll see that they have some of the more popular Linux uh, distros like Debian, CentOS, and Fedora, and some intriguing packages such as Dream Linux and Damn Small Linux. I've got a pretty good idea about Damn Small Linux, probably, you know, small footprint, but I'm wondering what Dream Linux is about. Do the features include unicorns and kittens? Don't know. Gonna have to check that out. Okay. Now this is really cool. When I uh, <clears throat> first started doing this, it was Windows 2000 and then Windows XP. And you could make as many Windows XP uh, clones as you wanted once you created the VM. Not a problem. The same is not true for Windows 7. Um, I bought a, a copy of Windows 7 uh, Pro, made the VM, tried to clone it, Sure enough, it's asking me for another license. So that's not working anymore. However, you can get these from, from uh, Microsoft. They offer free virtual machines as for testing as part of the modern IE project uh, because they're tied to different versions of IE. And the, the idea is that they're supposed to be used by developers to test compatibility with their website with different the different versions of IE. However, what you're getting is fully functional copies of the operating system and you can use them for testing or any other anything else you want. Uh, currently you can get IE6 on XP, IE7 on Vista, IE8 on XP. Why? I don't know because XP is like dead. IE8 on Windows 7, IE9 on Windows 7, IE10 on Windows 7. Lots of Windows 7. IE 10 on Windows 8, IE 11 on Windows 8.1, oh, we're back to Windows 7, IE 11 on Windows 7, and Microsoft Microsoft Edge on Windows 10. Yeah. Are those time bombs? Like yes, time that's the next slide. No, 90. However, that's the next slide. Good question. All right, so here's what <clears throat> Microsoft recommends. The VMs will expire in 90 days. But Microsoft recommends that you take a snapshot of the VM so that you can restore it. And if you're using VirtualBox, it has that functionality. So you can also get, under a different program, free Windows uh, server VM, oh, not VMs, but the uh, evaluation copies of Windows server products in either VHD or ISO format. These are not virtual machines themselves, but can be easily made into virtual machines by VirtualBox. It has that capability. VHD stands for virtual hard drive. 
real easy to convert. And ISO is the same thing you would get if you um, uh, downloaded any other op operating system. Uh, and it's, it's able to convert that easily. Now these have a 180 day uh, evaluation period. I have not tried it, uh, tried uh, doing the, uh, the snapshot and then rolling back. So I'm not sure that that would work, but I have after 180 days gone and just downloaded a new evaluation copy. So I know that works. So now, now we're going to have some fun. What's in your basement? We're going to talk about some pre special, special purpose pre-built Linux distros that you can add to your basement for uh, learning and seeing what kind of damage you can do. The first one you're probably familiar with, Kali Linux. If you want to study penetration testing, you can't do better than this. It's from Offensive Security. There's the link, and I'm going to provide these slides on my, my website uh, so that you can go through the slides and get the links to all the, the software that I'm talking about. It's pre-installed with over 600 penetration testing programs, including Nmap, Wireshark, John the Ripper, Aircrack NG Wireless LAN Pen Testing Suite, Burp, and OWASP Zap Web Application Security Scanners, and tons more, trust me. Here's a look at... Um, the password attack tools included in Kali Linux. And you can also see they've got information gathering, vulnerability analysis, wireless attack tools, and much, much more. Some other pen testing distros include Backbox, which is Unix-based, and it's developed to perform penetration tests. It's designed to be fast and easy to use. Also, there's Samurai WTF, which is a live Linux environment that has been pre-configured to function specifically as a web pen testing environment. Anybody know what WTF stands for? It does. Now, originally I thought it was what the fuck, and I thought that was pretty cool, but web testing framework is good too. We call it transfer of files. Oh, I like that too. That's a good one. Okay, and there's a, there's a peek at, at uh, Backbox. Now, compared to Kali Linux, it's got 75 tools, whereas Kali has 600. However, some prefer it because of its ease of use and speed. It's, it's said to be faster than Kali. And here's our friend Samurai WTF. This is specifically designed for... <laughs> This is specifically designed for web testing, and so the uh, the the tools that are that you can find there are geared toward that to sort of penetra penetration testing. Now, once you've got some pen test tools, in addition to your Microsoft um, OSs, there are some specific pen test targets that you can download that are have deliberately uh, vulnerable, so you can actually test the tools and find what you're looking for. Some of these include uh, Metasploitable, which is for use with the Metasploit uh, framework, Game Over, and OWASP Broken Web Applications Project, which works, works really good with uh, Samurai. Here's a look at the OWASP Vulnerable Web Applications direct, Directory Project. Uh, these are what is available currently, and you'll see they've got um, Metasploit there. We've got something really uh, interesting called Drunk Admin Web Hacking Challenge. I think it's in archives now, but you might still be able to take it. Um, the Broken Web Application Project from um, OWASP is there, and quite a few others that are available for you to investigate. Now, for other basement content, if your interests run to malware analysis, Lenny Zeltzer has provided a distro of Remnux for malware analysis. And there's also the Cuckoo Sandbox open uh, source software uh, for the automated analysis of suspicious files. Also, and I think this is pretty cool, Lenny has um, put together a list of sites where you can get sample malware 
for testing. I should just leave that off. Okay, there's a look at Remnux. It's got tools like Ida Pro and Ollie Debug for reverse engineering. It's also got tools, specialized tools for website, Flash, Java, and JavaScript analysis, as well as applications for analyzing malicious PDFs and Microsoft Office files. It's pretty cool. And there's the Cuckoo Sandbox, um, which is interesting. When you implement the, the Cuckoo Sandbox, it's a VM, and you run another VM within it. And the malware runs on that internal VM. Pretty cool. Here's the list of malware sample sources for researchers. And uh, Lenny reminds us to be careful not to infect yourself when you're studying malware. It can happen. OK. Now, so a couple of the other tools I want to tell you about are for forensics. So if you're interested in uh, getting to forensics, the SANS Investigative Forensic Toolkit, or SIFT workstation, is a group of free open source incident response and forensics tools. And Samurai Paladin is a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu for performing uh, forensics tasks. Here's a look at the SIFT workstation. It includes things like memory and network analysis tools as well as incident handling and evidence gathering tools. And here's Samurai Paladin. It contains some of the top open source forensic tools available. It's useful for triage, imaging, and examination of forensics evidence. There are over 16 categories of tools available, everything from data carving to mobile device an analysis. Sweet. It's easy to use, but they request a donation of at least $25. So if you like it, you might kick some money their way. All right, that's it for me. Happy geeking. Yeah? Have you ever played with or are you aware of a tool called GNS, Graphical Network Simulator? No. If you're into or you want to learn, like, uh, Network Layer, uh, Cisco, Juniper, stuff like that, that's what it's designed for. All you mm -hmm. have to do is acquire a copy of the iOS. And you can, like, I had a, an old laptop, an old dual core Lenovo, and I was able to simulate like uh, eight different switches or, and routers. Nice. And you're literally running right on the OS. You're running, you've loaded the iOS, so you're literally running the Cisco iOS with, you know, the only thing you're restricted to, of course, anything that's hardware based. Wow. But, but it's, so is, it's is this a VM? Cool. It's another VM and a VM. It's a VM sort and a VM. Of, yeah, nice. Not, hey, yeah. hey, Jim, can you jot that down? Yeah. You got your, your thing? QEMU, QEMU, yeah. and then you can actually run it and use it for routing, and you can run your VMs, and so you can bounce your VMs off all of your routing protocols and everything. Oh, very cool. I'm going to add that. When I went through the Cisco Academy through a local community college up in my place. And yeah, I'm going to add that. Something else that I'm going to... And if you're interested, uh, No Starts for us just released a new book on GNS3. Oh, great. Okay. So Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Enterprise virtualization. You can run yes, you can run a free version of ESXi inside a hypervisor. Okay. Will it run inside a virtual box? It'll run inside it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay. And then you can run VMs inside of that. Oh, neat. Yep. Once again, the more memory you have, the better. Yep. Uh, now, there's another slide I want to add to this. It's a proof of concept, and I haven't been able to check it out. But uh, a Mac hacking says it's possible to create a uh, VM of uh, um, Mac yeah. OS X. Just start with Darwin and build on that. So Jot that down, Jim. Uh, <laughs> My assistant. Uh, Google um, um, Frankenmac, something like that. Yeah. Oh, I've made one of those. Yeah. I've, made, I've made a Hackintosh. Yeah, Hackintosh, that's right. Virtual Hackintosh. It's a virtual Hackintosh. Oh, cool. Oh, All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We've, we've done that. What you were talking about also was. Uh, I've heard this, I haven't done it in my core Mac either, but, but if you're running virtuals on the Mac, you can virtualize a Mac on, on the oh, Mac. Yeah. So you can use the actual OSX. Oh, okay. Because everything, the hardware is already. Oh, 
there. Yeah, I reach, recently acquired a Mac Mini, so I'm going to go home and try that. Mine can't do it, so. No. I use a, a little server like that. That's it next to two beers. So that's how long it took to build. Um, awesome. About six inches by six inches. Uh, ITX motherboard, 32 gigs of memory, and Xeon inside. ESXi on that. So I use that for my case. Oh, that's so, cool. I'd love to see I that. I leave it behind because it's not a laptop. It's, not, it's like a stove. And likewise, I've heard the Intel Nux. Yeah, Nux are cool too. Yeah. Hey, you, guys, cool. you guys have any uh, uh, links or projects or anything? Yeah. Like that? Oh, yeah. So, Bone Hub. Bone Hub? Yeah, Bone Hub is run by Got Milk. And it's basically a list of all the vulnerable web apps. Awesome. But also, it has a, a bunch of vulnerable VMs. It has a bunch of. Uh, there's a couple of Cisco VoIP items, I think. It's just nice. kind of vulnerable Ooh. applications and things. See, to play with. thank you guys. You're helping me grow this. Yes. <laughs> well, on VoIP is in a 